Quiet Place Part 2 was written and directed by John Krasinski and continues the story of the Abbott family trying to survive the post-apocalyptic world taken over by the creatures that hunt by sound. Whew. I have been looking forward to this ever since the first film ended. I remember first uh, seeing the first Quiet Place back in 2018 when it first came out in theaters. Um, I was so happy that I finally had a chance to see part two in theaters um, because of like so, after so many delays I'm just like god I mean this is like one of the few films that was supposed to come out last year that I was really looking forward to seeing because the first film I really loved and I thought it was really good so intense so suspenseful and gave me characters that I can care about and I'm just like yes can we get more films like this and when it comes to the sequel, I am so happy to say that it is great. And honestly, it's probably the best film I've seen so far this year. And I have a feeling, and I'm crossing my fingers for this, that this will definitely be a good year for film. Now, when it comes to the film's opening, them showing as day one, we get to see the creatures landing on Earth. We see how the, uh, the family is, how they are trying to, I mean, what how quickly are trying to adapt to this new world that they're forced to live in. Uh, because when we first saw them in part one, I mean, they pretty much got everything figured out. Well, mostly everything figured out when it came to the creatures and... Uh, when they took over Earth, I mean, they now, I mean, they learned how to, like, adapt and, like, I mean, because for most of the movie, they spent most of the part one being silent. But now, uh, right after that sequence uh, with day one, that it cuts back to right where the first film ended. I mean, it picks up right after the events of part one, and... Right, I mean, from then on, I mean, just like the first film, it's very intense, very suspenseful, and it, uh, one of the, uh, one of the few things that it does well, and, it, and in a good way, it amps up the tension more than the first film, because, yes, uh, when you watch the first film, I, I think, like, the one scene that uh, had the most, um, uh, uh, like the best level of tension in my opinion and I'm pretty sure a lot of people will agree with me on this was the birth scene like how like uh, Emily Blunt's character was like I mean her water broke and of course the moment when she stepped on the nail and she, she's doing her best not to scream because one of the monsters is in the house so she has to like uh, uh, crawl her way into a bathtub and even when she uh, when she's trying to give birth, I mean, she's getting close to, uh, I mean, she's so close to screaming, uh, right at, and right at the moment she does scream, you get this feeling like she's about to die, but of course, uh, her son, like, uh, releases the, uh, I mean, she, uh, he sets off a firework, uh, when it comes to the moments of tension and part two, I think they surpass moments of part one but i mean don't get me wrong i still love part one and part one i have i really i really like uh I, I gave it an a when i reviewed it for my latest halloween special and i was like part two just please just be as good as uh part one and i was so surprised to say i mean right after i came out of the theater that i thought part two was better than part one and it's so rare to have like good horror sequels because when it comes to most horror sequels for most horror films i mean and some horror movie franchise they mostly intend to be just awful because i mean we've seen it like in certain horror uh, in certain horror movie franchise i mean some sequels would sometimes be good sometimes they would be decent and sometimes they would just be crap but in the case of uh, The Quiet Place Part 2, I just think that it surpasses Part 1 in almost every single way possible. And I'm just like, I am so happy with this, for sure. Now, when it comes to the cast, I think this has probably the best cast in this 
in this new series. Um, I mean, still, I mean, you have Emily Blunt, who is amazing as always. Uh, but really, when it comes to Melissa Simmons, bless her soul, she is amazing in these movies, uh, especially for an actress who's actually deaf in real life playing a deaf character. I mean, I'm glad that John Krasinski went out of his way to find an actual, I mean, a deaf actress. And I'm pretty sure that it's not really uh, an easy task, but Melissa Simmons really makes it work. And I really want to see her like act in like more projects because I really love her work in the, in the Quiet Place movies. Gillian Murphy also really surprised me. Of I thought he was like he was really good in this film, and uh, we see in the flashbacks that uh, we see that he is a friend of the family, and uh, throughout uh, the events of the invasion, uh, his wife and son have died, and it's he took it very hard. But throughout most of the film, he helps uh, Melissa Simmons on her journey because at some point in the film, she goes out on her own. Uh, without getting into spoilers, they had to get somewhere, and they encounter a few obstacles along the way. Uh, one in particular, which I'm pretty sure, I mean, he mentioned this in the trailers, that there are some people out there, and that are the kind of people that are not worth saving. They run into these people, and it leads to a very intense sequence, which I don't want to give away. Noah Jupe, I thought, was also pretty good. I mean, I liked him in part one, but what he... Uh, well, what he goes through in part two, he goes through a lot of shit. Namely, a moment where he gets caught in a bear trap and he's like screaming in agonizing pain, rightfully so. And uh, right when they uh, meet up with uh, Kelly and Murphy's character and they take him to, to uh, right when he takes them to their bunker, uh, I mean, it's soundproof, so they had to pour alcohol on his wound, and he, of course he's screaming in agonizing pain. That had me wincing, and I'm pretty sure a lot of people would say the same thing. I saw this with a few friends of mine, and they did the same thing, and they were, we were like, holy shit. And I was surprised of how far they would go with the PG-13 rating, because this easily could have gone for an R, and if it did, I mean... The, uh, I'll be, I'll be surprised of what they could have managed to do if they did have an R rating, but I, I can understand they wanted to go for a PG-13 rating. But still, I mean, it's definitely some of the most hardcore when it comes to how far they would go, I mean, how far the PG-13 limits would go, because that was just... Even with that rating, it's pretty intense, and that's saying something. And I was watching this film like a hawk when it comes to trying to look for flaws, and I honestly did not see anything that was particularly wrong with the film. I, I would go so far as to say it was even better than the first film, and there was just so much that I loved about it. I mean, of course, John Krasinski's writing and direction is spot on. I mean... I really want to see him direct more films like this, and of course there's an indication that there's going to be a part three, and it, I mean, of course, I mean, if they do make part three, I am all in. I'm, oh, well, he already has, I mean, John Grzezzi apparently has a script uh, ready for part three, but of course it's not green lit yet, but once that's ready, I am all in, because I love this series so far, and it shows no signs of slowing down. The performances are amazing, they're spot on, and when it comes to the levels of intensity, tension, and suspense, it's huh, it has you on the edge of your seat, and this is, the cut, this is the type of horror film that I always want to watch, and I wasn't bored, and I just thought the film was just as great as the first one, or if not, even better than part one. And I'm really surprised to say that. So, I'm gonna give A Quiet Place Part 2 an A+. Plus. So I'm curious to know what you thought of A Quiet Place Part 2. Let me know in the comments below, and guys, thank you so much. 
as always, for watching. I'm looking forward to doing more videos really soon. And also, I've been meaning to do, like, more videos uh, last month for my 80, I mean, for my 70s and 80s segment. I'm going to do more this month. Um, uh, as for what films I want to review for, uh, for that segment, um, mostly first I, I want to, right before I begin on that, uh, I have to post this review first. And then I'll, I'll uh, do a video for The Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It. And to uh, restart my segment, I'll probably start off with Taxi Driver, I believe. Because that's one film that I've been meaning to talk about for a very long time. Because I've recently had developed a lot of love for Martin Scorsese's films. So to start off with that, I'm definitely going to start off with Taxi Driver, but I have to post this review first and then do a video for The Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It, right before I start on that. So guys, thank you so much as always for watching. I'm looking forward to doing more videos really soon. And if you want my thoughts on old or new movies, of course, you know where to find me.